All right, let's talk uh, Tudor TTQB. So when you order it from Tudor, you get this. You've got triple threat quarterback. He can pass the ball. He can kick the ball. And if you put him on a base, he can run with a ball. So uh, you're better off just saying this one is going to be just for passing. So the first step is you remove the leg. You just twist it like this and you pull it out. You see like I've done with this. The next step is um, this piece at the top is this rounded uh, holder where you're going to be pressing. What you want to do is you want to get a pair of nice, I've got my Saron pliers here, and you just crush that ball. You make it flat and you can also trim the top so it's perfectly straight. So I'll do that later. Um, so then you'll end up with this. Oh, also, I'm sorry, I forgot one other thing. You also take this piece here and you crush it a little bit and what that does is it gives you a slightly bigger surface area to get the ball mounted so it does a better job of holding the ball in place see you've got it like that it actually stays on nicely and so now you've got boom but with the problem right now is again this guy's still got his leg here um actually, let me remove the leg here so the problem is when you're going like this you've got this nice pointy T that you don't need. What you need to do is you need to take your shears, get it right flush up against it and cut it. Or you could use a razor blade to trim it or maybe an emery board. So one final customization. Uh, when you get the uh, quarterbacks from Tudor, you have this lever in the back. Um, some people just bend like I do, just bend it out of the way. So you can see how it was just, I put a pair of pliers here and just cranked it until it was out of the way and it doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, come into play when the quarterback is pulled back. See how that's the same way this one is? The lever's just not in the way, so when the quarterback comes back, he doesn't touch the lever. What some other people do is take the lever and just bend it back a little bit and line it up with the elbow. So the elbow, so if this is back here, the elbow comes back and or the whole player just kind of fits in there. Here, let me get the leg out of the way for you. In reality, you would be like this, and you'd be looking down from the top, and you'd be lining up and using this to line up uh, the elbow. So you're basically pulling the quarterback back straight. So I'm not sure which is better. You see, here's my finished quarterback. I've got the flattened top. Um, I've even got a little marker, which shows, I'll show you how I came up with that little line over there. Uh, the leg is removed, and what helps most is painting it purple. So footballs are sold in these little strips like this. Um, this is from Tudor Games. Uh, these are actually the bigger ones, and you see one of them I've already colored with a Sharpie red. Um, so a lot of people uh, modify the footballs just a little bit. So the first thing I did was I took this spray starch out of the laundry. Um, this is, you know, if you want to have a shirt with a collar that's a little stiffer, you take this out. I'm not going to spray it here, so I, don't, I put it on a paper towel and I kind of spray it and I spray the other side. And what that does is, just like starch does for a shirt, it stiffens it up a little bit. So, because these felt, uh, these felt footballs are actually made from belly button lint, and uh, the stuff just keeps coming apart, so the football will fray over time. Um, this helps keep it together. The other thing is by painting it red, the coolest thing is if you have a blue sharpie and a red sharpie, you paint it red, you let it dry, then you go like this, and check it out. The purple. Typically what you want to do is you want to put different colors uh, on either side of the ball. For example, here on the standard size one, I've got sort of like a grayish purple, and I've got a green one here. Um, and also by painting it, by coloring it while it's still in here, you could actually just color the outside and leave the inside in there so it looks like the ice cream sandwich. Which leads me to the next Tudor ball. Um, they make these, they call the Proline Footballs. Uh, they look like an ice cream sandwich, which uh, one of the worst desserts in the world, basically. Uh, flavorless vanilla ice cream between two sheets of brown cardboard. Anyway, this ball is a little bit heavier. I mean, I know that we've been talking about spraying uh, starch on the felt ones. Uh, that adds a little bit of weight, the ink adds a little bit of weight, but this is much heavier. So, when this ball hits this player, he's liable to move. Look at this. Uh, if I go like that, pow. See how much he moved him? I mean, that's, again, that was a point-blank shot, but uh, let me show you the difference when I use a regular felt football that's been doctored up. It moved it, but not nearly as much. Again, I'm doing point black range. I'm shooting uh, as hard as a 
hard as I would for a very long pass, but this one really, really bounces the guy around. I just nicked them. Um, so that's the reason I don't care for these so much, because the last thing I want to do is get a guy open downfield, hit him, and find out that he gets knocked over. It's a completed pass, but then he's down there. These are the new Tudor, they call it, I think, satellite or pill balls or something like that. Um, it's a lot bigger. It should make it easier to hit the guy. Um, I'm not really seeing that, because one thing I find, it's very thin. It's the same thickness as the other ball, but it's much bigger, so I think it's less stable. Um, Tudor also made these, these rubbery kind. Um, I'm not a real big fan of these. I finally stick to the uh, to the release mechanism of the quarterback. So let me show you what you want to do. Is you want to calibrate your quarterback. So uh, it's key that putting a ball in the spot, and again. You learn which way your favorite football, whether, you know, let's say in this case green side up or purple side up, which way is better. Um, but what you want to do is you want to eyeball from the ball to the hand to the player. So you want to get those all in a row. And how do you make sure that that's actually right? So, for example, if you eyeball it, I'm trying to do this, and I go boink, and I miss to the side. So what happens there, a couple things. Uh, one is, in this case, it was my mistake. You'll notice when I, my hand came off, it came off, it didn't come off uh, straight, it came off to the side. So for example, if I'm right here, I can't miss, right? If I hold the, if I hold the guy like this, even if I pull it back straight, it's, it shoots off, which is exactly what I did before. Um, just to prove that I'm not blowing smoke, again, I'm lining them up exactly, I'm going to hold it on this side, I'm going to go like that, and go boink like that, and miss to this side. So that's a great example to show you that you really have to go straight, and that's uh, my big flaw. And this actually, this is a good way to test which is your best quarterback, which is your best uh, football, and all that. And you could either put a figure here, but I mean, I would just like to see what happens. If I'm going to shoot right along this 40-yard line, I'm closing. I, I don't have a dominant eye, so I have a hard time lining things up without closing one eye. So I'm getting this arm. I'm I'm staring straight down. Let's see, what am I going to use here? I'm staring straight down. I'm, literally, my head's right over the, the quarterback. This is covering up the line here. This is exactly in line with that and that. And I see the figures there, and I'm pretty sure the line is straight. So if I just pull it back, and when, I pull, when I'm pulling the hand back, I'm also, since I'm right over it, I'm making sure that the hand is always covering part of this line. That's why I know I'm not twisting this way, and I'm not twisting this way. So I'm going to pull it back like this and fling. And I noticed, and I saw out of the corner of my eye that hit right on the four there. So it wasn't exactly right. Try it again, because who's to say that I released it properly? I may have released just a hair off to this, you know, I may have released a little bit this way rather than this way. So I'm going to try to concentrate on bringing the, bringing the ball back nice and straight. And you see I'm holding the base down as well. All right, so you want to eliminate movement, and what I mean by that, and again, I'm holding it like this. This is glued down. It actually goes through here. Some of them I don't do that, but I actually glue it down and tape it down. Because the problem is if you just stick it in like this, the problem is it's really not in there that well. Because when I crank the guy back, look what happens. See, if I'm, if I'm not holding it down, because what you want to do is you want it to have him bend at the ankle joint. So I'm bending here. I want it to bend back nice and straight just from the ankle joint. I don't want the base to be lifting up. So in other words, if I go like this, you see it's lifting up from the base here. That adds another piece. It's just like having a hitch in your golf swing, right? You don't need moving, additional moving parts. So I'm just going to concentrate on getting this coming back straight, and I'm trying to release it quickly and straight. And that hit him right between the fours there. So, this again, this has been calibrated as far as I could tell. You don't need to have a player there. If you just had some sort of a system, maybe you just caught the ball, or if you just, you'll see out of the corner of your eye where it's going. So, bang. Again, that was straight. Um, the other thing you want to do to calibrate your quarterback, so the question is, uh, right, I mean, do I hold him down like this to shoot at this guy, or do I hold him like this? I mean, is this going to go up in the crowd, or is, and is this going to go right here? So, what I've done is, uh, you see on this guy, I've got a line here, and the, rate, the reason I have that line is if I put the ball straight like this, however I start like this, and pulling it back normally, bang. Well, that was right about here to 38. 
now there's again there's there's a little bit of uh, error right because the ball goes you know it's hard to tell am I right on that line or not the other thing is how far back if I only pull it back like this that's different from cranking it all the way back. If I crank it all the way back, boom. So actually those are pretty close, but uh, not usually. So nice and easy, boink. So that, you know, lightweight, uh, light pull is gonna go here. If I pull it back all the way, it's just gonna release a little bit higher. It's gonna go this way. But on a standard pull, again, this is not a guarantee that you're gonna hit your guy or you're gonna throw it exactly where you're talking. But for a regular medium pass, a regular medium pass, I go bink, and that's right there. So if I'm going to do a very long pass with Chuck Foreman, um, I'm going to aim a little bit lower than usual. In other words, the ball's kind of aiming here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it back a little harder than I normally do for a medium pass. And that actually hit him. For a shorter pass, I would, um, I would aim a little higher. Well, actually, for this, I would probably just aim right at him and just bink like that and just hit him right in the elbow. So what this does, it gives you just a gauge on how to aim your guy uh, this way, you know, vertically, how, how high to throw it. So anyway, that's how to get started with a TTQB.